doing this, man? How's your day going? Good. How you guys doing? We're doing all right. I've got my YouTubers here uh, ready to go. They've got their notepads. I've got my kids on Instagram Live doing the same. Um, but I, I, I got to tell everybody how we met. We met at an Albert Pujols Foundation event, uh, hitting a few golf balls. And that was the night Mike Trout hit a golf ball to, to Neptune, I do believe. Um, but, uh, I know, I know you hit some bombs as well. Um, so just, if you could tell the audience on YouTube and Instagram, um, just give us a quick scoop of, um, of, of kind of how you got to be, uh, one of the best, what I call closers in the game of baseball, uh, for the Chicago Cubs, um, just give us a quick little snippet. Who in the world is Rowan Wick? Well, I definitely wouldn't call myself a closer. There's, uh, there's a man named Craig Kimbrell who, who locks that down, but I'm uh, fortunate enough to, to, to just be there with him. Um, yeah, so I started as an as a outfielder, a catcher, actually. But, um, yeah, I took, took some time in the minor leagues to kind of develop and uh, pitching now. Been, uh, it's been a journey for sure. No doubt about it. I, I love, I mean, I'm a Cubs fan, full transparency. I'm a Cubs fan, and when you come in, I feel good. I feel good about what's going to happen. Um, you, you have command with your fastball. You've got a nasty curveball. But I want to hit on how you started as a catcher and a position player. Um, is that what you want? Growing up, let's go as a kid because we've got a lot of youngsters here. Uh, on YouTube and Instagram, eight, nine, ten, eleven years old. Um, were you always a catcher growing up, or did you play all the positions? Yeah, that's uh, that's what well, kind of a reason why I had some resistance when I when I they made me into a pitcher is just because I love to hit and I love to play the field. I love to to play baseball, and I kind of saw how pitchers were. And to be honest, a lot of the time I'm watching the game instead of playing the game. So you know, it's it's great to to kind of play all positions and uh and then eventually they told me I had to pitch so yep here we I, are I'm with you I I really I really enjoyed diving and uh sliding and playing every day and, and just getting dirty every day that was the reason why I I kind of went the path of a center fielder but uh when your number was called to be become a pitcher had you had a prior experience doing pitching was it all um catching and 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 outfield or had you been doing both as a little leaguer middle school high school yeah no I never really pitched um it wasn't until I was just down the road from you at uh Cyprus that I threw yep. a couple bullpens with my my catching coach I guess he didn't think I was the best catcher but <laughs> I uh I threw a couple of bullpens when I was at Cyprus with the hopes of potentially getting drafted as a, as a pitcher. But uh, no, it wasn't really until 2015 that I, that I pitched. That's wild. Um, I, you know, I, I do a lot of pitching lessons for nine, 10, 11 year olds, 12 year olds, which is good because you want to know the basics and we need pitchers out there, but it is kind of telling when you're 27 years old uh, possibly the prime of your career, and you are throwing absolute bullets, 97, 98 from the mound, healthy arm. Um, maybe let's just talk about that a little bit because we've got a lot of coaches watching this, parents, kids. Uh, you obviously didn't throw 50 innings a weekend uh, during, during your little league or, or travel ball baseball, and now uh, you're showing off that arm. Speak on just the overuse that, that is detrimental to young pitchers. What do you say to that? Yeah, I mean, I guess I'm, I'm blessed with a fresh arm. But um, so I mean, like, if, if, you are a, if you're a young athlete, definitely play other sports, too. Like, I played hockey. I played soccer. My dad played rugby, so I played rugby a little bit. Um, but, yeah, like, save those bullets, I guess. Um, if, if you have to pitch, pitch. But... Yeah, not, try not to be overused if you if you're a coach, right? It's, uh, I know it's it's a big part of 
the uh, youth baseball being yeah. overused. But um, yeah, no, try and try and play the field, right? That's why I mean, like hit, love to hit, do it's it good. all. Yeah, I uh, write that down in your notebooks, YouTube, Instagram. Play multiple sports. The reason Mike Trout is a great outfielder is because he was a great basketball player in high school. And so across the board, Jackie Robinson played four sports in college. Wayne Gretzky. Uh, Frank Thomas. Yeah, Gretzky. Uh, who, um, Frank Thomas played two sports at Auburn. Um, so oh, you grew Gretzky. up in Vancouver, big hockey, obviously. Was that your number one sport uh, early on or um, – uh, was hockey a big part of your life? Yeah, I played hockey for sure, like all the way through. Like, we don't have great weather here. So in the summer, you play baseball. And then when it starts to rain, it gets cold. Put your 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 uh, baseball gear away. And then you bring out your hockey gear and you play hockey. And, yep. then, and then in between there, you play a little soccer. And I did that in high school too. So, uh, yeah, I get a little bit of everything. Awesome. Now, kids, I'm going to give you a chance, both on YouTube and Instagram, to ask your questions to Rowan Wick. Um, and, and you're right, Craig Kimball, Kimball is the Cubs closer, but if, if something uh, happened to Craig and you had to be the closer, I would be just fine with that. But uh, we'll call you the best setup man in baseball, uh, Rowan Wick. And by the way, remember the name Rowan Wick. Pat Hughes uh, has been known to say that, the radio guy for the Cubbies, and I love that quote. Um, just a couple questions from some of the kids that I wrote down. Rowan Wick, Major League pitcher, what'd you have for breakfast? Uh, today I had an orange, but if I'm going to say favorite breakfast, I'm going pancakes. That's uh, one of the very few things I can actually make, and being a Canadian gentleman, I do enjoy maple syrup, so... Uh... Love, love, love pancakes. I love it. Write that down, kids. Pancakes, maple syrup. Um, did you have a nickname growing up, or do you have a nickname now? Well, my mom calls me Rowboat, but uh, I guess we've kind of shortened that to just row. I like it. Rowboat. <laughs> I, I'm digging the rowboat. Guys, rowboat, nickname, write it down. Um, best friend. I, I, for me as a coach, like, I need to know the player if I'm going to coach them. And, and the first thing I do is ask them their nickname. And I can usually get a good sense of who they are by that. And the, the second thing I ask is, uh, who's your best friend? And what are they like? Because I think that's a good way to kind of get to know a player. Do you have a best friend? Or who is that? Well, other than my sister, who is definitely one of my best friends, I would have to say um, a man named Alone Leishman. He was my college roommate at Cyprus. And he has now gone on to be the double A pitching coach with the Seattle Mariners, Little Rock, Arkansas, the Travelers. Nice. And he for sure has helped me to become what I am. He's played catch with me <laughs> thousands of times. And uh, yeah, we definitely are very like minded. And um, yeah, he's my best friend. Um, this kind of ties along with that. But I I'm always talking to the kids about what makes a good teammate. Uh, and, you know, I think of some of my best teammates, they were my best friends. So along those lines, um, for that 10 year old out there, how can they become a great teammate for you? Uh, what, what does a great teammate mean? Yeah. You know, always cheering on your, your teammates when they're up to batter pitching and then, I don't know, stand, uh, stand at the edge of the dugout, give them a high five when they come in and just be a good friend. Yeah, always, always make sure you're hustling, and uh, nobody likes someone that's walking around the baseball behind them. So, a little pep in your step. Yeah, I like that. A little bit of both. You know, obviously, what you say means a lot, but then I think more importantly, what you do, that your actions speak louder than words. So, if, if you're on on the uh, edge of the dugout, just screaming, um, you know, your favorite cereal at the top of your lungs, or whatever it might be that might fire up your best friend and they might hit a home run because of that. So um, I love that. Do you have like a hobby or, or something to escape? For me, it's golf uh, or playing music. Uh, what about you? You got something to just get away from baseball and life? Yeah, both those things. I definitely like golf and some music too. But if I had to choose, I would like to be in the outdoors. I'd like to be out in the wilderness, in the forest, 
either hiking, camping, going for a run outside for sure. Good. I tell the kids, you need that hobby or that escape um, because, you know, a major league play, you're grinding 162 games a year. Same with Legion ball or summer ball or any sport. You need a, a place to go to kind of free you up mentally. And for me, I always feel like I'm a kid when I'm playing the drums. So that's mm. why I bring the drums. I've got it. I've got them right here. I bring them to the baseball field and that's my little spot. So, um, uh, it, I, I just, I think it's so important to be able to escape to a place where you feel like a kid again. And for me, that's, that's playing music. Um, I went to the Super Bowl this year and I asked a bunch of football coaches and players this question. I want to ask it to you as well. Uh, what makes a great youth coach? Or it, can you think of your favorite youth coach, hockey, basketball, football, whatever it may be? Can you think of one that sticks out that shaped you or uh, kind of gave you the, the mental fortitude that you have to this day? Well, my dad was my coach all the way through until I was probably 13, 14, maybe even older. And uh, yeah, you know, he, he would take me down before the games and throw me extra batting practice in the cage. And, uh, you know, he would always just, just make sure that I was doing the little things, like even when no one's watching. So I would definitely say my dad. That's good. I think of two people. One is a guy named Alan Ashkenazi, who was my hitting coach growing up at Greensboro Bat Center. Shout out, Greensboro, North Carolina. Um, but he just always made me laugh. Like, he made it so fun. And, and possibly he just knew that that's what I needed. I needed to laugh. And then my ability just came out, my athleticism. Um, but he made me laugh. And then the other one is my hitting coach in college, Coach Serato, who's now the head coach at URI. Um, for some reason, I thought if, if an assistant coach in college does extra work, like throws extra BP, they get paid more. No, no. They, don't get, <laughs> they don't get paid more. They, they might get paid less. But I went into his office and said, I need to restructure my swing and, and work this thing out. And he showed up every day, 30 minutes before practice, and threw me early beeps. And just that, the idea of, of um, I mean, you know, he could have complained, he could have said no, he could have done other things, but he just showed up. And that idea of just showing up uh, just played a huge role uh, in my life and, and kind of framed the way I coach. Um, uh, Those kind of coaches don't earn extra money. They, they definitely earn the respect of their players, though. That's right. And that, that's what means the most. And then those players will listen. And if you are a good coach and you show up early, then you got the right idea, then your players will respect you more and they will, uh, in the long run, they'll be better. That's great. And you've had some great managers. And you played with the Cardinals. You played with the Padres organizations, with the Cubs. Um, just a quick one on Joe Madden. You played for uh, Joe. Uh, what, what's it like playing for that guy? Yeah, I mean, first of all, you, don't, you never met the guy. You go into his office and he knows your name. For, you know what I mean? Like, type of guy that's just like super stand up awesome guy and uh definitely a player's manager somebody you uh you can trust someone you can go to and uh runs a pretty good bullpen too so that helps yeah that's great for sure I, i'm th also thinking of the guys in your clubhouse uh, there's just some of the most fun guys uh to watch to play with um the leadership of anthony rizzo uh the playfulness of javier baez um, I, one of the questions from the kiddos is just, what's it like playing with, with a guy like Anthony Rizzo or Javier Baez? Yeah, I mean, there's a reason that each, and, each of those guys is at the top of their, you know what I mean? Like, they're the best in the, in the big leagues mm -hmm. at their position, at what they do. And obviously, there's a reason for it, just watching them go about their business, how they, even as simple as things of how they eat and just the extra work that they put in to make sure that their bodies and minds are at the top of uh, where they need to be. Yep. And it shows on the field, right? It's Go absolutely. I, it, what really stands out to me is what uh, players do off the field too. And for Rizzo with his foundation and the money he raises and the, the impact he has, the people he touches. Uh, and then with Javier Baez, I heard a great story where, um, a mutual friend, a, a nine-year-old kid came in 
Uh, and Javi just looked at him in the eye, asked his name, played with him for like 20 minutes, playing catch. Uh, you know, he was just super, super uh, into being a kid with this other kid. So um, those are my favorite players, not just the ones that are great on, but the Roberto Clemente's off the field as well. That, that's a huge part. Maybe you can speak on that uh, for these kids here, the importance of just building character and being a good person. Yeah, for sure. The Cubs do, uh, do a great job of just supplying that platform of uh, being able to have a foundation like Rizzo does. And Rizzo talks about when he was in, uh, in a situation before pro ball, he, he was able to meet Johnny Lester and they had similar, uh, they had similar paths. And um, yeah, that sort of thing. You, 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 uh, you experience as a kid and obviously Javi and, and Rizzo had, and, uh, and then you, you get into the position that you're at and you just want to give back and, and, uh, and, and make their day. Right. And it's for the kids, right? That's why we play. It's huge. Absolutely. Well, kiddos start thinking about your, your questions you want to ask, uh, Rowan Wick. Um, but I wanted to jump into some mechanics of pitching, uh, just some basics. We've got kids that are five kids that are nine kids that are 16, but, um, for the kid that wants to pitch, but maybe is a little afraid, uh, because I see a lot of that, oh, I got to get on that hill and I've got to throw to that guy with all that equipment on. Um, what do you, let's just start there. What's a good jumping off point for a kid just starting out that might be a little hesitant to get on the bump? Yeah, just have fun with it. So uh, it's like you're pitching, but you're just doing it from a, I don't know, an athletic standpoint. So you're a shortstop, you're picking the ball up, you're throwing it to first base. It's, it's the same thing. You're not trying to create anything that, that isn't. You're just trying to throw the ball to the target, and it's as simple as that. That's, um, yeah, that's good. I, they, kids kind of think, ooh, pitching, I got to aim it to a certain place, or I got um, to make a perfect pitch. I've heard you say this. You, know, you don't have to make the perfect pitch. Just make the good pitch. Yeah. Uh, what, what does that mean? Make just make the good pitch, not the perfect one. Well, when you're trying to make the perfect pitch, you put all this pressure on yourself, right? And then, and then you start thinking about everything. You start thinking too much, right? So, you just think about making the same pitch as you just made a little better. You'll you'll succeed yep. every time. Not every time. <laughs> Most of the time, you'll throw a good pitch, right? And sure. That's, uh, that's what I've tried to work on for sure. It's just clearing your mind to, to where you can throw a good pitch every time. Yep. I've, I've, I've read a couple more quotes from you about kind of your mindset on the mound. And it's, you're trying to think these positive thoughts, just stay positive. And for me, watching kids, when they start thinking negative is when they're thinking about the outcome or they're thinking about, I hope I, I hope I don't walk this guy or I hope I don't, you know, throw a wild pitch. So um, just staying positive in that moment with some positive thoughts. Can you get specific for these kiddos? And, and what is a specific thought that keeps you positive? Because you don't just say the word positive when you're about to make that pitch on the outside corner. Do you have anything specific that, that really keys you up and, and, and puts you in that positive state? Well, yeah, for me, it, it starts all the way in the bullpen, right? Before I even go into pitch. So you're starting there and that's your, that's your fresh slate. And, um, and then you get warm, you get loose. And then on that run out to the mound before you even pitch, I'm just saying to myself, throw strike one. And from there you're throwing strike one and then you throw strike two and then you're right where you need to be. So without even letting any negative thoughts go into your mind, then you're already, you're already, um, you're already ahead of the hitter. Awesome. Um, all right, start asking those questions, kiddos, but I am going to throw this one um, at you while the questions are starting to roll in. Um, and welcome in. If you're just joining us, we are live with Rowan Wick, uh, relief pitcher for the Chicago Cubs and a, and a darn good one at that. You played on Team Canada uh, in the World Baseball Classic 2017. That had to be pretty cool for you. Um, uh, uh, on that note, uh, what was it like pitching for your home country in the world flipping baseball classic? What was that like? Yeah, for sure. No matter what jersey you put on, when you put Canada 
across your chest. That's that's definitely the most special. I mean, Cubs is pretty cool too, but when you have Canada across your chest, you know you're pitching for an entire country. So so that was awesome. And then definitely being around uh, guys like Freddie Freeman and Morneau and then Dempster, that was kind of my first big league experience. And then to have it be with those guys was just extra special. So it was cool. I was uh, I was good friends with a lot of hockey players uh, in college uh, from Canada. And there's just something about uh, you guys in Canada. It's just so fun to be around. You're, you're uh, me being from the South, you know, we have a great time. It's all about having a good time. But you guys are smart, too. <laughs> you're smart and you're fun to be around. So uh, I love that. Here's a good first question from a dad. Um, with your dad coaching you, was he harder on you than he was the rest of the team? Or uh, what, did he did stay down the middle with that? Yeah, for sure. You, your dad obviously wants the best for you. And uh, he's going to be harder on you than everyone else. And I think that's what kind of, you know, pushed me to kind of be better and prove him wrong more than myself, maybe. And uh, for sure. Yeah. Um, uh, you talked about you played both. Well, you, you, were, you were going both ways in high school as a hitter and as a pitcher and, and in college, but mostly as just a hitter and a position player. Um, from, I think it's Rebecca, when did you know, yeah, I want to be a pitcher, and I actually like pitching. When did that? When did that come in your brain? I got a baseball in my hand too, by the way. Um, we can talk some grips. We'll do a little yeah, grips for sure. Uh, oh yeah, you got that. Uh, this one's signed by Roberto Clemente's son, by the way. Oh, wow, which That's is pretty cool. neat. But it looks like that ball might have had a, a a couple of rips on a couple of base knocks. This might have been a double, yeah, right there. Oh, is that you? Your your double. No, I might have I might have thrown this one. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was actually looking at a video of your first save, and I think it was in Pittsburgh. Did you keep that game ball first save? I do. Yeah, I had my first save and my second save, and um, yeah, wow, what a day! Oh man, come on, yeah. it's great. No, I mean you, you're well on your way. I, I I mean I I can't wait to see where you're at in five years, but I'm just gonna watch every single pitch along the way. Uh, but yeah, maybe when, because you wanted to be a hitter, but now you're a great pitcher. When did you say, I'm a great pitcher and I like being a great pitcher? Um, you know, I think it, it was gradually, you see a little bit of success and then, and then you start to like it. But, um, I think it was really like fall league of 2016 was when I, when I was having a lot of fun playing baseball and that's when I was playing with some studs who are now, um, big league all-stars. So try to follow in their footpath. And um, yeah, for sure, that was when I really started to like it. Yeah, who's a, who's a pitcher in that uh, group of guys you're talking about that you were like, yeah, I want to be like that, that dude? Um, I'm trying to think who the pitchers, but the, the Austin Gomber, he was one of them. And uh, Austin Voth, he's with the Nationals. But the hitters was Cody Bellinger. Um, Verdugo, yeah, and, and Bader, Paul DeYoung, and uh, a catcher, Garrett Stubbs. He's still to this day one of the, my favorite catchers. Is that right? We've got a lot of catchers here. What makes a good catcher? Uh, uh, it, the, the way they frame the ball, just the way they appear to you? What makes a good catcher to you? I had full trust, and if I bounced a pitch, he was going to block it. And um, and he was, yeah, he's a small, small guy, and he showed a big target. And, uh, yeah, maybe it is the small target that, that I like. Make sure yeah. you uh, aim small, miss small sort of thing, right? That's right. Aim small, miss small. I want to go on YouTube. Uh, at what age um, uh, do you think travel ball? We got a lot of kids that are like, should I play travel ball? Should I not? Travel ball being like that year-round weekend game. Um, yeah. Yeah. Should they be playing travel ball at a young age? When should they start? Any ideas? I think if you're good, the scouts will find you. Regardless of um, of how much you play, you spend all this money playing on travel ball teams. Like, if you're good, then they will find you, and that's my advice on that. Write that down. If you're good, they will find you. He's also talked about playing multiple sports how he was a catcher and a hitter, even into the minor leagues as well. 
I agree, 100%. If you're good, they'll find you. Um, awesome. Um, let's go with another question on, um, let's go here. I saw a great one over here <laughs> from Thomas Kuzminoff. Um, how do you feel when you plunk a batter? Well, uh, because, and to be honest, we have a lot of kids that come to me with a lesson and they don't want to pitch because they're afraid of hitting the batter. So what, where do you stand on, you know, when you hit a batter, um, how do you feel? You know, I purposely try and pitch inside to, to hitters to, you know, let them know that, that I'm there, that I'm, I'm coming at you. Um, and if you hit somebody, you got to act like it was, uh, you don't walk around like you did it on purpose, but you know, you don't, don't really apologize for it. Like, Hey man, but, yep. uh, for sure. It's, uh, not ideal, obviously, well, but, I mean, um, sometimes but, it'll, it'll make sure the next guy doesn't dig in there as tight. You know it's I mean? true. I mean, and you get to, you get to think of it as a hitter too. Like you were a hitter in my yeah. life. You can, you can pitch to yourself and, and try to play mind games that way. But, yeah, for me, if, if I know a guy is is going to come in twice in that, in that bat, I'm not, I'm not diving in. I'm not looking away. I'm kind of in a rocking chair, so to speak. And, I mean, this up here for a hitter is huge. And being confident and kind of knowing what's coming. So, um, uh, for some of the older guys, and maybe this is good because you have a nasty curveball. But I tell the kids not to start throwing it until a certain age. Do you have any ideas or any advice there? When do you start snapping that nasty curve that you've got? What age? Ooh, I don't know. High school, maybe like junior, senior year, just to let the scouts know that you're, you're ready to go into pro ball. Junior, senior year. And I say this too. Maybe like, even later. Yeah, and maybe even later because yeah. they like teaching you the curveball, right? The, pros, the pro pitching coaches – the scouts, the, the, um, they'd rather see you throw a 98 and then they'll teach you off speed. Is that, is that accurate? Yeah, for sure. You go into pro ball is kind of like a clean slate. Yeah. And then, and then from there they have all the analytic numbers and, and spin rates and what pitches you should be throwing. What's the most effective pitch for you to throw. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, it took me a little long, a little while to, to learn it. Like, I mean, I'm still working on it, but um, all the time. Yeah. It's, uh, it's never a, a finished product, let's put it that way. Sure. So. Um, I, I, I get, I've gotten a few questions on just arm strength and how to, how to do it the right way. Uh, what do you say to that 13-year-old who's trying to strengthen his arm? Um, what have you been doing in the offseason to keep it strong? Well, there's a there's a, a program called the Throwers the Throwers Ten, and it's uh it's a uh, it's on it's on the internet. It's um just a couple simple movements with uh like three to five pound dumbbells, which is plenty if you ask me. If you're doing fifteen reps of the Throwers Ten, then five to ten pounds is plenty. But yeah. um for me, long toss like you're practicing throwing, you just want to do it a little more couple extra throws here and there a little farther that it cannot help it cannot hurt it cannot hurt at all throwing 10 the throwing 10 look it up on uh, on the internet that's what this guy's doing um those jaeger bands you know the jaeger bands that you hook into the fence oh yeah those are fantastic as well mm -hmm. well every time you go watch a major league game and kids you know yeah. you go to a game early what are all the pitchers doing they're using those bands what is that doing exactly, those bands? Just strengthening little muscles around the shoulder. And, and really, it's just a warm-up more than anything because it's really light and, uh, and you can do a lot of reps. And just have fun with it. Make stuff up. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. I'm digging that, too. I've uh, Being the quarantine, I've put some green tape on my wall <laughs> in the backyard, and I'm just trying to throw to that target. Um, uh, so the one thing I really wanted to talk to a, a major league pitcher about is, is hitting spots and, and accuracy because a lot of kids, especially in a game, they think they have to aim it with their hand or like place it uh, like a dart. How, how do you go about accuracy and hitting spots? Um, 
what's telling that ball to go exactly where you want it to? You know, it's not a, it's not exact science, but right. It's um, I would say it's rhythm, tempo, and repetition. Repeating your delivery every time. On, on the fastball, on the curveball. Yeah. And I throw a cutter too, and it's just the same, um, the same mechanics every time. Look at yourself in a mirror doing it. Same leg lift, rhythm, tempo. Use the mound to your advantage. The slope that is. Yep. And uh, lock in, lock into that target. Rhythm. That's a big one. Uh, just rhythm and tempo. Those first two you said, rhythm and tempo. Um, I I know back when I was in college, our pitchers they would just focus on. Um, this just lifting that leg and staying balanced right here this first move that would be the entire workout for a Monday and then maybe the following day they would move on to the next place um, it's it really is just a matter of repetition repetition building those motor skills can you uh, can you o overwork that or is that just uh, is 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 um, too is, much is not enough. Too much is not enough. That's what I'm looking for. Dynamite you, drop in. <clears throat> too much is not enough as far as looking in a mirror, figuring out your rhythm, figuring out your tempo, because once you get into the game, you don't really want to be thinking it. You want it to just take over. Um, a lot of guys um, on, on like, I mean, a lot of teams that I've been on spend a lot of time in the weight room just because there's a lot of mirrors and you're standing there, you just, you're, I mean, guys stand there with their bat, they're practicing their swing, what they look like, what they want to look like, what they need to fix, just tweaking things all the time. And I'll stand there and just kind of lift my leg and, and see how long I can stand there, balance. And uh, you'll build those stable stability. I don't know what the, what the term would be, the stability in your, in your legs mm -hmm. to, uh, to be able to take the impact, especially on the land leg coming down on that, I'm um, coming down on my left leg and, there's a lot of torque kind of coming over. So building that stability and, and balance. Yeah. To, 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 to be able to take it every time and repeat the exact same delivery. Um, we, we've got K-Longs here. How old are you, K-Longs? Before we answer this question, sidearm pitcher throwing a bunch of uh, uh, junk and cutter fastball. We want to know how old you are first, K-Longs. And then I want to answer that question. Um, any advice on exercise routine that will help the arm strengthen for velocity? Um, you talked about uh, long toss, and you also talked about the bands. Um, uh, anything you do in the weight room, specific weights, uh, squats, uh, something that, that's going to give you a little more beat velocity on that fastball? Yeah, for sure. Squats. Um, a part of the thrower's tennis push-ups. I'm always doing push-ups just do 10 in my kitchen sometimes. Sure. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Um, I, I get my six-year-old daughter on my back, and I, I, I just rock those push-ups out. That's perfect. Um, another one would be hanging. Like, you get a chin-up bar, and you just hang in there. It helps decompress the spine, and it helps strengthen your shoulder. Love hang it. There, hang there for a little while. I have one in my, in my garage. Got that, Liam. Liam's going into college. Big left-handed pitcher. Um, nice. All right, Kay Longs is 17. So let's go to this question. A 17-year-old sidearm pitcher, since we don't have a high pitch variation, what would you recommend besides the fastball, slider, changeup, and cutter? I'll just let you roll with that. Man, uh, I played with a guy, you probably heard of him, Steve Ciszek, last year. He actually has uh, a couple sweet videos on his Instagram page right now. I was watching them the other day. Um, Man, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go too far off of what you're saying. Throw the fastball, trust the fastball. Um, like we said, a lot of times you can throw a fastball in two different locations, and that's, that causes, you know what I mean? It's two different pitches, essentially. You throw one in, you throw one away, and that's maybe your 0-2 right there. And then, mm -hmm. and then you throw a slider, and most of the time doesn't even have to be the best slider. Yep. And, uh, I mean, if you're throwing all four of those, then, then you're doing pretty good, I'd say. I, uh, for me, the, the two things that really uh, messed me up as a hitter, I faced Verlander in college, and he's got that 
had a herky jerky motion where he hit the ball very well. Yeah. I, I just, I, I couldn't feel comfortable because, um, you know, I couldn't really see the ball until the last second. And then just mixing up the speeds to where I could not dial it in is, is it, is it coming hard? Is it soft? Uh, so those two are big for me. Let's go as a hitter for you. What, what, what was tough? What did pitchers do well that, that gave you struggles as a hitter? Yeah, I mean, like you say, throwing um, different, throwing, throwing, uh, throwing the hitter off at different timing, tempo. One thing that I learned this year as a pitcher was um, from Pedro Strobe doing the quick pitch, which I, uh, I've tried to implement a little bit, and that's just coming set and, and really not even coming set, just, just getting your sign and, and then rolling right through, and that, that definitely will mess up a hitter. Oh, it makes him mad, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you uh, quick pitch with an off speed, you quick pitch with a curveball. That's, that's even tougher, I'd say. Yeah. But uh, as a hitting standpoint, no, I was never really, really a great hitter, so anything would really mess me up. <laughs> oh, man. Well, uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, Isabel. Uh, Isabel Roberts, I'm doing lessons with her, a 12-year-old girl throwing, uh, throwing uh, fastballs. Uh, what do you say to her? To, any advice to get her to throw the ball faster? Um, good question, Isabel. Yeah, like I say, rhythm, tempo, use the mound. Um, I don't know if you guys mess around with weighted balls. Yeah. Um, that can be a good tool. I've actually just started a little bit recently. But, uh, yeah. I mean, velocity is a blessing, I would say, mm -hmm. a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, yeah, if you're, if you're long toss and you're, you're getting your, your, your uh, shoulder work in and a uh, combination of a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, I would agree. Long toss, the bands, Isabel, the weighted ball, as long as you're not overdoing it, uh, good things can happen. Um, we're we're going to do one more question, and then we're going to give this guy a huge attaboy because this has been awesome. I really appreciate you doing this, man. This is super cool. Um, oh, let's go. <laughs> well, we'll go with this one from the rookie. Uh, will you get ejected from the game after accidentally hitting three consecutive guys in a row? <laughs> well, I, I hit eight straight guys one time when I was nine, and I did not get kicked out. So um, are you going to get kicked out of any games if you hit three guys in a row? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Maybe the yeah. first maybe the first one or two could be uh accidental, but then after that the umpire's not gonna like you. I love it. I love it. Yeah, okay. you wanna keep the umpires on your side, that's for sure. Let's mm -hmm. start with my YouTube game. Let's give Rowan Wick an attaboy. One, two, three. And then on Insta as well, give him a follow if you haven't followed him yet. He's, uh, he's, he's a really awesome guy, and I'm, I'm thankful you'd come and just give us some tips here, man. This is our virtual sandlot, so um, uh, this is super cool that you came. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, for sure. Uh, this is a crazy time for everybody, right? And, um, you know, take this time for – for, uh, don't take it for granted, you know, get in there and every rep counts. Um, yeah. So. It, Thanks for having it's me It's actually on. a great time to work those skills and, and get better. And then when you do get back on the field with your team, everybody's going to say, what happened to that guy? Yeah. Wow. You know, separate, separate yourself. Awesome. Uh, we'll end on this note from Pat Hughes, radio broadcaster of the Cubs. Remember the name, Rowan Wick. Outstanding. Thanks, my man. Yeah, thanks for having me. You got it, buddy. Appreciate it. Have a good one. All right, gang. Good job. I hope you wrote it down, Sandlot.